Hello, I'm Mr. Howard. Welcome to this video. This is part two of our look at quadratic calculator applications. So we're looking at real world situations that can be modeled with quadratic functions. And in this case, we're going to borrow one from uh, physics. And if you've taken physics or you are taking physics, you might look at a similar situation in, in actually uh, in your physics class. So uh, consider an object that is that only moves vertically under the influence of gravity. The function of time that describes the position above the ground is y sub t equals y sub 0 plus v sub 0 t minus 4.9 t squared. So this is just a quadratic function. You can see it's got a negative squared term so it's going to uh, open downward like this. It's going to look something like this. And distance is in meters and time is in seconds. So y sub 0 here, we're going to plug in values here and here. The y sub 0 right here is the initial position at time 0 of the object above the ground. So if you're letting this thing go, how high above the ground are you letting it go from? Okay, you're throwing it straight up. v sub 0 is the initial upward speed. So when you let it go initially at time 0, how fast is it going when you first release it? Okay, realize that we are tracking an object here, and I want to make this clear so that you don't get confused. We are throwing this object straight up, and it's coming straight back down like this. Straight up, straight back down. We are going to get a parabola out of this, but realize this axis, our x-axis is actually time, so how long is it above the ground? And our vertical axis here is the height above the ground. Okay, so this is not like we're throwing a football where uh, the height is the same here, but our x-axis is horizontal distance of throwing the object. That's not what we're doing here. The horizontal axis is actually time. So we are actually just throwing an object straight up. It is not uh, being thrown forward at all. It's just being thrown straight up. So uh, let's look at an actual application here. So example two, a man at the top and near the edge of a 10 meter tall building throws a ball vertically upward with a speed of 5.2 meters per second. Okay, so let's think about this. We've got a, a building here, 10 meters tall. This is not to scale, by the way. Um, and we've got a man here. Um, and awesome stick figure here. And this man is throwing an object. So we are assuming since it's uh, 10 feet, uh, pardon me, 10 meters, that he leans down, uh, throws an object up like this, and then it falls back down to the ground. So this is the path that this um, object is taking. He's throwing it straight up, gravity acts on it, and it comes straight back down. Okay? So that's actually what is happening here. All right, so let's put 10 meters here so we remember that. So it says, specify the function of t describing the vertical position of the ball and then graph it. Okay, so we're going to use this function right here and we are going to plug in y sub 0 and v sub 0 from our problem situation. This minus 4.9 t squared is coming from uh, the gravity portion so that's not ever going to change for any problem situation. If you're using meters and seconds this minus 4.9 t squared is always going to be there. Okay so let's plug in our values. So we need to uh, get those. So our y sub 0 y sub 0 is equal to the initial position above the ground so we're assuming he's letting it go right at the top of the building so 10 meters and our v sub 0 in this case is the initial speed and they give that to us as 5.2 meters per second okay so now let's write the function so our y sub t in our case y sub t is equal to y sub 0, 10, plus v sub 0, 5.2, t, minus 4.9, t squared. Alright, and this is a plus right here. I'm, I'm drawing the t's with hooks on the bottom of them so you don't get confused between, between the plus and, and the variable t here. Alright, now we need to graph it. So let's let our calculator do that. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put this in Y1 in our calculator. Now we need to set up our window, which is always the, the trickiest part here. Uh, so let's 
hit our window here and let's think about this. Okay, x-axis, that's our time. So we don't need anything uh, really much left of the uh, y-axis here. So I'm just going to put negative 1 for a y x minimum just so we can see the y-axis in our graph picture here. Uh, obviously time before we let the object go doesn't matter at all so we don't really want to even look at that. X maximum, okay that would be the maximum amount of time. Well if you're on a 10 meter tall building and you toss an object upward and it falls to the ground hopefully um, it would make sense that let, let's use five seconds. It shouldn't be airborne uh, for any more than five seconds so let's set that we can adjust it later if we need to our y minimum remember that's distance well we want to be able to see the x-axis so let's just do negative two we're not we're not concerned about anything below ground level here we're just tracking uh, from releasing it to when it hits the ground that's all we're looking at and y maximum okay so if we're on a 10 meter tall building and we throw this thing uh, upward uh, I think it would be safe to say, let's just call this 15. So a Y maximum 15. We're on a 10 meter tall building. We toss it upward uh, and it falls to the ground. So let's try that. Graph it here. And that works. We could actually reduce our, our Y maximum here a little bit. Um, and let's cut this down. Let's make this, this is three. So let's make, just to make our graph a little tighter there, let's put X max at three and we'll use that okay so let's bring this graph picture over so that we can work with it and let's talk about what's going on here so this is an example of using our graphing calculator and when looking at this graph this this full parabola here has a lot more to it than what we actually need realize all of this stuff uh, over here we don't even care about that, that's not important because that's not modeling our situation. The only part that models our situation is in orange right here. Whoops. In orange right here. All of this is what we're concerned with right here. All of this stuff. Okay, we're not concerned about anything below here. We're only concerned we toss the object up and it's airborne. So this is the height and this is the time. So we're only concerned with that orange section right there. Okay, so just realize that as we look at the problem situation. All right, so let's uh, label the vertex and then this root. So the vertex is going to be important in the problem situation, most always, and then a root here. Realize this root over here doesn't matter because that's before we even let it go. So it's, it's not even anything we want to work with. So actually, let's just kind of erase that. Okay. We could certainly leave it on our graph, but just so we really model the situation, I'm just going to go ahead and erase that. So let's look at what our vertex is. Let's let our calculator tell us. We're going to use maximum, right? This is the maximum point, so second trace option four for maximum. Uh, left bound, we could put in, type in an x-coordinate or just arrow to the left. That'll work. Enter. Uh, right bound, the calculator asks us a series of questions. We tell it what right bound, so we want to get right of the maximum. That's good enough there. Enter. For a guess, just hit enter. Calculator will find it. So I'm going to drag uh, this graph over here so we can keep it for future reference. So there's our vertex there, and we can uh, type um, or write that in here. So our vertex is an important point, of course. And that is point, we'll call it point 0.5306, point 0.5306, comma, 11 point, uh, we'll call it 11.38, 11.38. Okay, so in our problem situation, that means that at point 0.5306 seconds approximately, it was 11.38 meters. So the maximum height it reached was 11.38 meters. Uh, let's get this root over here. Remember, that's the only root of our parabola we're concerned with because it's the only one that models our problem situation. And we did that before where we just graph y equals 0 here. So we're graphing a horizontal line right on the x-axis. And then we can use our calculator to find that intersection, that intersection right here. And that'll give us the root. So first curve, enter, calculator asks us for second curve, and it's on the line y equals 0 and hit enter guess um, 
let's get a little closer to the this one so it doesn't go back and tell us that one and there we have it so let's bring that graph in so that we can use that for future reference right here so that root is at 2.2.055 2 we'll call it 2.055 comma 0 all right so what is that really telling us well uh, this is our x-axis is 2.055 so that 2.055 seconds it is zero meters above the ground so it hits the ground so we toss this thing straight up and it falls and hits the ground at 2.055 seconds that's what it means so that's going to basically answer several of these questions already so b part b what is the maximum height above the ground that the ball reaches well that was our vertex right here and that was 11 11.38 meters okay uh, when does the ball reach the maximum height well that's still our vertex our x coordinate because that's time so that would be at 0 0.5306 seconds uh, approximately we'll abbreviate these things so 0 0.53 0 0.5306 seconds when does the ball reach the ground okay well that's the root right here right when the height is zero what time uh, does that occur well it happens at 2.055 seconds all right that's an s not a five okay so that's that part let's look at the last two parts of this problem alright so let's look at the last two parts of this problem situation part E when does the ball pass the top of the roof of the building on the way down so we I brought our little um, awesome stick figure picture uh, down here to work with so we threw the object up and it came back down so it went up above the building came back down past the top of the building and fell down to the ground so we really want to know when was the object at a height of 10 meters right so all we need to do is get our calculator up here and go to y equals and in y2 now we're going to put a horizontal line right across here at 10 a height of 10 meters so we graph that so there's our uh, parabola modeling the situation and here's our graph so we would normally sketch this but we're using our calculator and we have uh, computer here so we can actually let that do some of the work for us so this point right here is when it passes notice it has two intersections it's also the actual y intercept of the parabola right here at 10 but that's at time zero that's not what it's asking for it's asking for after you release it up and it, it's flying up and it falls back down and passes later so it's going to be a future time not not at time zero when it when you first let it go so it, it would be this intersection right here so let's find that value so that's second trace intersect is option five. First curve is our parabola inner second curve is our y equals 10 line inner guess just hit enter and it finds it there so I'll drag that over so we can work with it and to answer the question when so that would be our x coordinate our time it's at approximately 1.061 seconds so 1.061 seconds okay all right part f how high is the ball after falling for 1.2 seconds all right so here's the path of our not the path but the um, situation that we're modeling here so we've got height is the y-axis and our time is x so if we want how high is the ball after falling 1.2 seconds well that's going to be an x value a time value of 1.2 so we can easily have our calculator do that for us and the best thing remember most of these things go through second trace the calculate menu the calc menu here so in this case I'm going to use value so we can actually type in an x value and it will jump to that point on the graph so we hit enter and notice it's flashing with x equals and I'm just going to put 1.2 seconds in here so just 1.2 hit enter and it'll jump to when the x coordinate is 1.2 and tell me exactly what that y value is which is actually what I'm looking for alright there we have it so let's bring that part of the graph in here and talk about it so it tells me at 1.2 seconds my height is right here 9.184 
meters. All right, and that answers it. Okay, so we're done with this problem and done with this video. So I will see you in the next video.